Hello and welcome to this video on how to get started using STM32Cube.ai, the new STM32CubeMX extension to bring pre-trained artificial neural networks to STM32 devices. Deploying artificial intelligence on STM32 microcontrollers allows you to enable a breakthrough technology at the edge closer to the sensor on embedded low-power MCU devices. The STM32Cube.ai extension, referred to as Xcube AI, is built around a groundbreaking library generator to import and efficiently convert pre-trained artificial neural networks developed with popular deep learning frameworks such as Keras, Cafe, and Lasagne. We will show you how to take an existing pre-trained artificial neural network and use the Xcube AI to generate an embedded library that runs on your STM32 device. We will show you how to optimize your artificial neural network with weight compression and validate the network implementation on your target STM32 device. To follow along with this getting started, you will need a Cortex-M4 or M7 based STM32 MCU, such as one of the F4, L4 or F7 families, but we also support the new L5 family based on the Cortex-M33. You will also need a Keras model, so we'll show you how to download this model on GitHub, and CubeMX version 5.0 or later, and of course a compatible ID to compile the code. That can be Italic True Studio, IAR, Kyle, or System Workbench. To download the model we are going to use in this video, uh, you'll go to github.com using the following URL and then you'll click on model.h5 and on the top right you'll see a download button, click on it and save it on your desktop or in your download folder. And then we're gonna rename it to har underscore github.h5. Let's get started by installing the Xcube AI CubeMX extension. So first you'll want to open STM32 CubeMX then go to Install or Remove Embedded Software Packages. Go to the ST Microelectronics tab and under Xcube AI, select the extension and click Install Now. To start a new project, you'll go into File, New Project. And then, as you can see, you'll have the MCU selector window. And you'll scroll down on the left to enable the AI filter to filter out only the supported uh, part numbers. To further filter out the list, you can provide the model that we previously downloaded. So model type Keras, type saved model, model, point it to the download directory, HAR GitHub, and click Analyze. So when you click Analyze, the Xcube AI plugin will uh, analyze the network and give you some information uh, related to the minimum memory footprints required to run this model. So as you can see, it will give you a minimum required flash memory of almost 3 megabytes. This is too big to run on most microcontroller embedded flash memories. So we've added a feature called compression where you can compress the weights of the model. And we'll start by compressing by 4. Click Analyze again. And now the minimum flash required is down to 700 kilobytes. So now most of the microcontrollers have between 1 and 2 megabytes of flash. And in this tutorial, we're going to use an F746 uh, MCU. So let's go back to the part number search, type F746ZG, and select the ZGT in an LQFP144 package and then click Start Project. When your project is open, we'll start by enabling the Xcube AI extension. Go ahead and click Additional Software, and then under Xcube AI Core, you'll start by enabling the core to include the AI library. Then go to Xcube AI Application, and here you have three different types of application templates that can be provided. Have System Performance to benchmark the neural network implementation on the target MCU, validation to benchmark and compare the computed uh, results and application template to build a user application on top of this template. So in this video we'll use the application which will report both performance numbers and validate the network on the device. 
validation and OK. Then you'll need to enable the plugin in your project. So you'll click on additional software, STMI Curl Electronics X Cube, and then enable both the core and the application. So now you're in the main Xcube AI window. You'll have some general information about the overall implementation on your MCU, and then a list of model and some quick information. So if we go to the network tab, we can see that the model has been preloaded with the, the model that we selected earlier. We can rename it, let's say HAR GitHub, and under model type Keras, and we want to say saved model. And of course, we need to apply some compression. So let's say a compression of four, click analyze. And we have some uh, the information that was reported earlier. Next, we want to validate on the desktop to see if there has been any numerical degradation by the compression factor that was applied. And as you can see, it says success. Next, we'll want to configure the rest of the MCU to run this AI validation application. So as you can see, the CRC IP has been enabled by default by the tool to run the AI library. And then we will want to configure the UART interface to communicate with the device. So in the pinout view, use the search menu to look for PD8 and PD9. Those will be the UART pin connected to the ST-Link virtual COM port. Click on PD8 and select UART 3 TX and do the same for PD9, selecting UART 3 RX. Next, you'll want to go to the UART 3 configuration menu and select asynchronous mode and you can leave all the default parameters. 115, 200 bits per second, 8-bit word length and no parity. If you are using a different board, make sure to check your user manual to see for the correct pins. Now that the UART peripheral is configured, you want to configure your cores for optimal performance. Go to System Core and select Cortex M7, and you can run it either through the AXI interface or through the TCM interface to use the ART accelerator, but for this tutorial, we'll use the AXI interface and then you'll want to make sure to enable the iCache and the CPU dcache. Next, you'll go to the clock configuration and we'll want to bump up the speed to the maximum supported frequency, that is 216 megahertz. As you can see, QMX is able to automatically configure the PLL and change the clock source if necessary to run at the desired clock speed. Next, go back to the pinout and configuration tab to return to the Xcube AI configuration window. Finally, we want to configure the Xcube AI application uh, settings. So under the platform settings tab, select UseArt Asynchronous and you should be able to see UseArt 3. If you use a different UART interface, it should show up here. Now that your project is all configured, you'll want to go ahead and generate the code. So first, go into Project Manager, give your project a name, so you can call it My Project. And you can give your project a location. In my case, it will be on my desktop. And select your tool chain. To run the validation application, you need to increase the heap size to 0x2000. And then you can click Generate on the top right. Once your project is open, go ahead and click Project Make to compile the project. While the project is uh, compiling, we'll go over the different components of this project. Under Library, you have Network Runtime.a. This is the library that will be used by the AI core component. Next, in middleware under STAI AI data, you have HAR GitHub underscore data.c. This will be the file containing all the weights of your network. If you have compressed the network, you can see a smaller list there. Under source, you have HAR GitHub.c, and this will be the calls to the AI library. And then you can right click on HAR GitHub.h and this will show the public API that can be used by your application to call the network. So you have different calls, but the most important ones are AI HR GitHub create, AI underscore HR GitHub init, and AI HR GitHub underscore run. Run is the function that will actually be used to run your network. 
and your user application code is under application user and you have your main.c that will start by configuring the cache, the HAL init, the system clock, and then the AI cube init. And then you have a cube AI process function. This is where all the validation process happens. Now that your code is compiled with no errors and no warnings, you can go ahead and connect your USB cable to your board, both the board and the PC. And you should see a steady red LED indicating that the ST-Link has been correctly initialized. Next, go to Project, Download, Download Active Application. You can also launch a debug session if you prefer, but it is not required for this validation application. Once the project has been downloaded onto the flash, you need to go ahead and reset the board to run the validation application. Now that your active application has been programmed, go back to CubeMX, go under HAR GitHub tab, click validate on target, and then you can either use the auto automatic configuration or manually select the COM port. Here, I know that my board is connected on COM20, and then I click OK and then the validation process is starting. Uh, I would recommend that you pull up the output log to see the progress. And you can see the progress of the validation on target going. Once the validation process is complete, the report shows the average time spent on each layer and the average time spent per inference. You can also see the reported complexity in Mac, uh, multiply accumulate, and the ROM size and the RAM size. If this error is calculated using the L2 norm, and if it is below a certain threshold, the tool will report that there has been no numerical degradation. And in this case, we were validating using random numbers. Next, we will show you how you can also use a custom data set to validate using your input data. So go back to the configuration window and in validation, you'll select from custom data and you'll point it to a custom CSV file with all your input vectors. Go ahead and click validate on target. This time we'll use automatic. wait for the process to finish. So as you can see, in both cases, the validation was successful, meaning that there has been no or very little numerical degradation due to the compression and the C implementation. If you choose a higher compression, let's say a compression factor of eight, and you see that your validation process fail, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will lose accuracy on your implementation. Some further analysis is required and you will have to look at the output of your network. Now that you validated your network implementation on both your host machine and your target MCU, you can either remove the validation application or switch to the application template and use the API described in hargithub.h. For more information, please visit st.com slash stm32cubeai and you will find other videos, example code, function packs, and other information. Thank you for watching.